Hello there, so this is a, a video update and unboxing of a new Sky Router. Now, <laughs> the story goes, uh, for viewers who've watched my channel for a while, if you go back probably about a year actually, to be fair, um, I was here unboxing the Sky Q Router, which was Sky's latest instalment, uh, but was only for their Sky Q customers. Uh, things have changed since then. Um, if you watch the videos, basically in a summary, I did go for the SkyQ package. I got to use the SkyQ router for some time. It was nice, to be fair, nice ISP router. Um, and yeah, it was pretty cool, to be fair. Uh, but now, fast forward, I joined BT. So I took their broadband out because staff got it uh, heavily discounted and free. So I obviously had their BT home of five. So I had to return the SkyQ router. Uh, I then rejoined Sky because I prefer it. I've got my TV package with them. And as I've been with them for about 17 years, got a pretty decent deal. So went with their broadband. Um, here in the UK for kind of fibre to the cabinet service, there's kind of two packages with most of the ISPs here in the UK. You've got your 4010, so your 40 megabits per second download and 10 megabits per second upload. Obviously it does vary on location distance to the cabinet etc etc or the faster one which is 80 meg download and 20 meg upload so for the last six seven months i've used the 4010 service been pretty fine to be honest uh, but then i thought for there was a deal going negotiated a bit with sky because they are pretty good at negotiation they do look after their customers if you haggle a bit and went for the 8010 instead so uh, to get that uh, you just go on chart i upgraded and I did get the faster route, and then this is Sky's Hub 3.0, and you seem to get this with the 8010 service. Now, looking online, it looks identical to the Sky Q router, but know that there probably is some slight differences, which we'll have a look. So, there is a obviously a box within a box. Now, there is a little message on the box, and it says, "Please wait for 10 minutes after installing your Sky Q Hub while it updates the latest software." There we go, so plug it in, leave it, and it'll download the latest software. And yeah, let's have a look what we've got. So it's going to be pretty much the same. So spinning it around, it is pretty much the same. So I'm just going to zoom out, guys, so you can appreciate the view. Looking here, looks just like a SkyQ router to me. It's probably just a SkyQ shell, just with slightly different internals, potentially. I'm not 100% sure. What I'll do after this video is do a bit of research, see if I can find out if there is any differences, um, but if there isn't, there isn't. So I don't need to follow the instructions, I know how to plug a router in, you just put your telephone cable in, put your power lead in, jobs are good then. I'm gonna put the router aside for a second, see what goodies we get internally. Now this is different compared to last time I did one of these. The last Sky Q hub had a figure of eight cable, so there may be some, might be more energy efficient, Hence why it only requires this adapter there, but we'll, we'll certainly try and find out. Obviously you've got your RJ11 cable, also known as your phone cable, which would obviously go into this purple port here, which is your telephone. This is for your broadband, that's for your landline phone. I like these hubs, they're quite nice micro filters, nice and compact, pop it in the wall, jobs are good then. You've obviously got one of these as well. Uh, this is also another micro filter for one of your extensions in the other house. If you just peel that back, it's just a micro filter. Obviously we have then got your power brick. Now let's see what it's putting out. So it's 12 volt, 12 volt, um, two amp. So yeah, not that powerful at all. Jobs are good. One. So I don't need that. I don't need that because I've already got one plugged in and I don't need that because I don't have a landline phone. I mean, who has a landline phone these days? I'm not sure. Just show you a bit of a diagram of how to get it set up. Well, as you've, if you've watched my videos for some time, I have done this before. So looking around, guys, it looks pretty much identical. Like I said, the only difference so far is the power adapter, but looking on the device, pretty much the same. You've got your WPS button there, so you can push that push it on another device and boom you connect connected without having to put in your passwords and what have you you've got your free indicator lights power internet wireless nothing on the sides on the back you've obviously got your adsl uh, to port in you've got your two gigabit ethernet ports now why i emphasize the gigabit this is the only hub sky 
Voids, which has Ethernet, which is 100 megabits per second or gigabit. So that's really important for me, as everything on my network is gigabit pretty much. One port will be a, a, a delegated to a switch, which has all the Sky HD barks, PS4, Apple TV, etc. And an Ethernet 2 will be for my Ubiquity access point, which I may turn off because this has got pretty decent performance. May use my Ubiquity as an extender for further down in the flat. Not 100% sure yet. I'm going to see the performances on this one compared to the Sky Q1, but they do look identical pretty much so far. Got yourself a little reset port there. Move this sleeve out of the way. I don't need the information because I changed the passwords anyway. Uh, now the model, this is going to be where it's get interesting, is ER115. I will try and find out the model of the Sky Q router. And obviously you've got your port there allocated for your power in. 12 volt, 2 amp. And on the bottom, you have obviously got your details for your password. And yeah, pretty much. Now there is your pin. Pin is to access the advanced settings on the router. So you can change stuff like port forwarding, etc. Uh, just got some rubber feet there to keep it nice and still. Um, and then obviously some grave engravings around the box, but manufactured by Sky Made in China. Um, so yeah guys, I mean that's pretty much it. Um, there's not a lot to it. Uh, I'm going to show you the setup, just where, I, where I'm going to have it. Um, and then that's pretty much it guys. Any questions obviously let me know. Uh, but we'll switch now just to myself, my own personal setup, it's nothing special. And yeah. Okay guys, so the current setup which I've established is probably going to be the best setup is uh, I've plugged in the obviously the RJ11 on the left there into the telephone port in the living room um, and I've used my fairly lengthy cable which is about 30 meters to then move it all the way over to my desk. So I'm just going to switch over to the desk now. And so yeah, we're about good seven six meters away from the phone point but i put it on top of here which is a uh, cabinet uh, it's central it's where my printer is this here is my ubiquity router so it, i know that's got good reception overall so that's where i decided to put it and i've got two feeds uh, which i will show you now So they're both inactive at the moment just because I haven't uh, plugged it in at the other end. So hence why there's no flashing lights. But the left hand side one with the braided flat ethernet cable goes all the way over to the switch under the TV. So that'll be for stuff like the Sky, HD, Apple TV and what have you. And then the right hand one which is a black thick one goes directly into the back of my LC2 big uh, RAID array with hard drives in. That's got a Thunderbolt adapter, gigabit adapter. That gets plugged into my MacBook Pro. That gives me direct hardwired access then, so it's quicker to access my NAS, and it's just quicker overall than Wi-Fi. So that's a good location to have it, guys, kind of central and nice and high up. So guys, let's look at the Sky uh, Hub 3.0, and I'm hopefully going to find some information out on what the differences are. Thanks. So the only difference I can establish between the Sky Q router and this Sky Hub 3.0 is a, the ventilation on the other one was uh, increased, so on the SkyQ router there was grids at the top which lets the heat out. Uh, the model code for that one is ER110 um, and this one which is ER115. Um, the reason why the other one had a figure of 8 cable has it as power line built in to work with the SkyQ TV hub boxes whereas these are aimed at broadband customers without SkyQ. So they lose that functionality. That is about it. It shares all the same specs like wireless AC, etc., etc., and two gigabit Ethernet ports. Thank you.